I, I love my Gen Z friends. I think what they're doing in the workplace, I, I, I think there's a lot of positives. I think they're going to shape the world of work in ways that we can't even imagine, and they're they're amazing. Um, <laughs> they are they are creative, and this is a fun story here. New York Post article headline, Gen Z workers say they should be hired for their personality, not productivity. Now, I, you know, if you stop that headline at Gen Z workers say they should be hired for their personality, I go, I love that. I, c- I could get onto that. But when you throw in the not productivity, I go, okay, well, what's going on here? Uh, so quick setup, we're going to watch a couple of videos of Gen Z talking about this. Uh, they, they have invented a term called personality hire. In other words, our value to you uh, is that we bring the fun. Right? We set the vibe, man. Hey, got enough people, you know, walking around pissed off and, and burned out. Hey, we're the fun people. This is the idea. And there's actually a, 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 a gal by the name of Bella Rose Mortel, a 22-year-old self-proclaimed chief vibes officer and um she's a tiktoker of course that's where all these grand ideas come from and um she has a series of tiktoks calling for an unserious workplace now again you say something like that and it's like we can have some fun but get after some serious business i i I think that's what they're saying uh, but the team's got a couple of videos. So there's the concept. I want to react to this. I want to see. I want to learn more about this. Is there something here? Is there something that's they're onto something and it's just a little off? I don't know. Let's watch. Here's the first video. Another reason I know I'm not old enough to be in the workforce is this. I came out of a meeting I just had and I took a minute and I was like, why were they so serious? <laughs> We're talking about this thing with a kind of fast turnaround time. And they're like, okay, how can we automate this? How can we tag these people? How can we bring in the right people? How action items fly wheel? Like, uh, uh, you know, I left the meeting being like, why don't we hang out longer? Like, why didn't we laugh enough? Maybe it was my fault. Maybe I'm there to to have the laughter to bring the energy. Um, I don't know, but I was like, why are we being so serious? Even though, okay, yeah, like we have to do this thing in the next 48 hours. But like, what'd you do this weekend? You know? Yeah, okay. Uh, I got to tell you, I don't, that does not bother me. I'm not bothered by that. B- because, she says, yes, I know we have to do this serious thing in the next 40 hours, 48 hours, but let's also talk about what we're doing this weekend. I And again, I'm not going to take her literally there, um, but I think she brings up a very good point, right? What she's saying is, if we're going to lock arms and, and we got to dig in here and bust it and work really hard... Shouldn't we kind of enjoy ourselves a little bit? You know? I mean, if anybody's ever done a really hard project, there's always a time where you need to take a break. If you've ever done a, a full-day meeting, and take a break. Um, I've led many, many, many uh, full-day brainstorms, and we always have a lot of fun baked in so that everybody stays light and everything else. So I, I from that standpoint, I really like what she said. Uh, I also like that she said, hey, you know, everybody's so stinking serious in there. Maybe it's on me. Maybe it's on me to crack a joke or tell a story. I love that. Uh, Alex, you're sitting in there right now. You know I don't intentionally do this, but I do this in a lot of our meetings. Um, I can be super intense and super serious one minute and the next minute be on a rabbit trail having fun because I think it's fun. Uh, so I, I okay, uh, so far, I, I like her. I don't think she was being immature. I don't think she was in any way flaky. Uh, or unserious. I I think that's a good vibe. Way to go. I I applaud Gen Z. I like her. All right, we got another one. All right, let's see. Let's watch this one. And how do we stay playful at work? By turning our managers into girlies. This is what you got to do. Every time they're like, hey, great job. You say, slay, slay. Ooh. Be like, hey, King, happy Monday. Here's that thing that I was supposed to do, and I did it, and I killed it, and I slayed it. Slack them and be like, that really wasn't giving. That meeting was not giving what needed to be given. They do something good, be like, y'all ate. Y'all ate with that. You ate that up. Things like that. And then whenever you do it enough, they'll start saying it back to you. And that's when you know you've won, and you've brought the vibes to the workplace. <laughs> okay, let me just say this. I like her. Is this the gal that I was referring to in the... Okay, so 
uh, fuck, middle-aged guy, so, okay, they're, they're helping me along. Okay, so this is Bella Rose Mortel, 22-year-old Chief Ives officer. Okay, couple things on that one. Uh, that advice uh, can only be taken at about 50%. Uh, I, I I like like I like her a lot, but singing uh, a compliment to someone who is not your really good friend at the office, and certainly not in your age demographic, is going to hurt your brand. But I love what she's trying to do. So, for instance, I don't like the sing songy treat your. Treat them like a girl. I, I don't even know what any of that means. To completely honest with you folks, half of that last video was a completely different language for me. Like if I went home and started saying that to my teenage kids and keep in mind I've got an 18, a 15, and a 14-year-old, they'd look at me and I'm telling you right now, my daughter Josie would go, oh gosh, dad, you're so cringe. If I tried to use any of those words, okay, but I like what she's trying to get to here. I think the fun lingo like introducing the lingo. So, for instance, Bella's 22. If I'm working with Bella and she throws uh, a, a couple of words at me, like it was in that video, and she's playful about it, she's not singing it to me. Please don't sing. But if she throws it at me, she goes, "You're, uh, you're such a king." Is that was one of the things? You know, I'll be honest with you. I'm 49. I'm in a meeting with Bella, and I say something, and she goes, "Ken, you're the king." I'm. I don't hate that. Not because I think I'm a king, but I realize she's giving me a compliment and it's and it's like all of a sudden I'm the old guy who sort of won the praise of a young guy. Like, don't forget that. So here's what I think is really good about this. I do think that what Bella is saying in these two videos actually will help young people win older people in the office. I'm telling you right now, I'm in a meeting with a 20-year-old and they go, You're the king on that idea. I'd be like, all right. Yeah. All right. Like, I'm probably texting my wife after the meeting. Um, So I was just in a meeting, and, uh, you know, one of the youngsters, uh, you know, told me I was a king. You know? Now let me tell you what happens. Let me play this out. All that happened there was that a Gen Zer looks at an Xer and gives me a compliment of it, but they do it in their way with a little bit of slang or whatever you want to call that. And it's a compliment. And I realized that I have connected with this young person. They bought what I was laying down, right? They they ate what I was serving. Because you can't say that, right? See, I'm already not cool in trying to explain this. But all of a sudden you go, oh. And so that little fun moment is a moment of connection. So I... I like what she's saying. I think you have to guard against the sing-songy because you don't want to go over the line. But I think that's the only thing I'd say about that is no singing. Don't call him girly. Don't call a dude a girl. Like, let's just go with some bass. Let's just ease in. Like, I'll ask my kids a question, my boys especially, um, or I'll tell them something. And I think this is a positive response. I'm, in fact, I'm sure I am. I'll, I'll ask them something, and instead of saying yes, they'll go bet. Uh, or I'll tell them something, and they'll go bet. And I go, and I, I'm instinctively looking for poker chips. Because when someone says bet to me, I'm reaching for a stack of poker chips. So that's the idea. Uh, bringing some fun to the office is great. Now, let me let me, let me me close the loop on this uh, for Gen Z. If... You are positioning yourself in these job interviews as somebody who is really enthusiastic and fun. I'm going to be very committed to doing my job, but I think you should hire me because I'm going to bring fun and I'm going to bring some personality and I'm, I'm not ashamed of that. I think that's intriguing because if I'm a hiring manager and I am interviewing multiple people, Presumably I am. And you're on the younger side. And I feel like you're you're checking the box on the talent side of things, uh, the desire, the work ethic, the character issues, you got a decent resume, you're a good student, whatever. 
And in this moment of the interview, you say, hey, I want to. I, I think you should hire me because I'm going to bring some fun to the office. I'm going to do my job and do it to the best of my ability, but I want to be kind of your chief vibe officer on this team. Then I think that's okay to say. But if kids are saying, hey, look, I just want you to hire me because I'm going to be in charge of all things fun around the office. Again, is, does it make sense to hire a chief fun officer? You can validate it, leaders. If you can validate what it brings to the table, sure. But let's not go too far, youngsters, uh, on wanting to be hired only for your personality. Uh, is personality the game changer? Is it the X factor? Shall I call it the fun factor? Is that a is that a uh, competitive advantage? I actually think it is. I love it. Uh, and I think that what it will do is it will grow your relationship with older people in the office. Remember this. If they like you, then they begin to trust you. And if they trust you, they begin to count on you and they will promote you. So this is a high likability factor. I think there's a lot of good here. I love it. Uh, I should interview Bella. That would be a lot of fun. So there you go, young people. I got to go learn all the words she said in that video. And then go home and watch my kids cringe when I use them. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on.